All right, we're back. We're back. I'm still on the same beer. I don't want you to think that I'm like pounding beers because I'm gabbing here, you know, I just keep talking, so I'm not really drinking very much. But I've got a very fine Hofbrau original from Munich. Um, it's very tasty. I recommend it highly. All right, don't get your hopes up. This isn't going to be an hour. This is just me talking about cameras. My buddy Keith is traveling, so it's just me. Don't get your hopes up. I got a few minutes of cameras, uh, of Leica cameras. Uh, we did, last time we did um, a little video of the film M cameras and the differences between the M3, the M2, the M4, and all that stuff. We left off with the M42 and the M4P, but you know, during the production, or after the production of the M4, uh, around this time, the early 70s, uh, Leica also came out with cameras that had meters, exposure meters built in. And so this video is gonna talk about only Leica cameras that take the M series mount, the M series lenses that have exposure meters in them. And I'm gonna go chronologically. At least I think I am, right? So first, <laughs> there is the Leica M5. And this is a larger camera than the typical Leica Ms. And you can notice the squared off edges. Our strap lugs on many of them have the camera hanging vertically although some have a third strap lug. The Leica M5 was also made in silver chrome. This example is black chrome. We have a frame line selector lever, like earlier cameras, that will show you the different frame lines in the camera. What do we have here? We got 35 and 135, 50 and 90, 50 and 135, I think, and 90. It's been a while since I've looked through one of these cameras. Uh, here are your shutter speeds. It's very different from other Leicas. In fact, let me, put, let me put a regular one down here so you can see the difference. So here's where our shutter speed gets selected. Here's where our ASA, or film speed, gets selected. You have a self-timer here, like on earlier models, and the frame line selector lever a battery compartment. You might say, well, wait a minute, where's your rewind? How come you got no rewind? How do you rewind? That's on the base of the camera. This one, somebody put plastic on this camera. This is so stupid. Don't put plastic on your cameras because it leaves a terrible film and it ruins the finish. Don't put anything on your cameras unless it's gaff tape. I mean, look how f***ed up that is. What are we going to do about that? You know? Anyway, this is where the rewind is. Because you know why? Because it's electrical tape. It's like the worst thing you can possibly put on your camera. Um, so here's our rewind. But we also have the same type of situation of earlier cameras where the base plate is removed and the back door opens. And you have a little take up spool here. So there's no need to remove the spool. You have a little reminder. You can see we're missing some vulcanite. This camera's really been treated badly. But um, you have a little reminder of the type of film that you're using. Articulated advance, shutter speed. We have a hot shoe. We have an ASA. And so you have a meter arm that swings up here when the camera is wound and has a lens on it. Um, because I have no lens on the camera, you won't be able to see that little arm, but that's how the camera meters. You can see it has a very handsome script on the top and a very nice crisp lettering on the front. And the M5, especially if you're a taller person, um, uh, the M5 feels great in the hand. It's, it's a little bit bigger than your standard issue M camera. Oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna, we're gonna have to cut that shit. It's a little bit bigger than your standard issue M camera and slightly different design. But folks who use this camera love this camera. So this is one of the first Leica M cameras 
that has a meter, exposure meter built in. And then in keeping with the oddball size, the Leica CL. And this camera has a number of very strange features. We have our shutter selector on front with the ASA or film speed inside that dial. We have our advance in the usual place. We have our shutter uh, trip in the usual place. We have the two lugs so the camera is meant to hang vertically. Like the M5, we have our rewind on the base and our little reminder of what kind of film we're using. That's how you rewind the film when you're ready. You say, well, how do you load it, man? I mean, where, what do you do? Voila. And so the film cassette goes here. It goes under the film gate and into our little bracket. That sucker goes right up there. Twist and lock. Like other M cameras, the CL camera takes M lenses. So this is an M camera mount, like the M3, M4, and all the other cameras. And so you can see here I have a 50 millimeter lens on our little CL. And let's put these all together so that you can kind of see the differences in the size between the earlier cameras, like this is an M3. How is that? Can you see that? Can you see these differences? I mean, it's, it's pretty outrageous. They're pretty big difference. So this is our standard size M camera, the M5 notably larger, and the CL notably smaller. So that, that stuff is kind of cool. But then Leica got back to the regular size M camera. And they created, in the early 80s, the Leica M6. And the Leica M6, you'll note, has some of those same features of the M4, where you have your preview lever. And now we have 28 and 90, 35 and 135, and 50 and 75 millimeter frame lines built in. Because it takes a battery, there's no self-timer. You have the same type of shutter wheel, articulated advance, and canted rewind knob. Because these cameras have an internal meter, they have a little dot on the shutter that creates, on average, 18% gray. That's what allows our meter in the camera to work. Oh yeah, that's one second. So the Leica M6 also, like the later M cameras, like the M42 and M4P, there's no spool to remove. You just thread the film in between those tines, close the door, slap on the plate, and lock it, and you're ready to go. Early Leica cameras, first of all, Leica, cam Leica M6s have a tremendous amount of variation in the dot, in the writing, and in the inscription. Early Leica cameras that were made in Wetzlar say so on the top. But let's look at the finishes, because all that stuff is just cosmetic. It's all bullshit. The camera, it's an M6 camera or it's not, right? Doesn't matter what it looks like, at least to me. Silver chrome, black chrome, and you can see now no inscription, and rather it's on the back of the camera. And our little red dot here says Leica instead of lights. So there's a lot of variations here. But so we have silver chrome, black chrome, and then we have uh, titanium with this faux ostrich look vulcanite. This is not real titanium, it's just a titanium finish. These are the three most common varieties of the Leica M6 finish. During this time, Leica made a lot of special editions. They made a lot of stuff. Um, but the most common finishes are silver chrome, black chrome, and this very handsome titanium finish as well. And you notice that the Leica M6, like its predecessors, has a small shutter wheel, like the M3 and like the M2. This is gonna be important when we move to the next model, which is the M6 TTL. See the larger shutter wheel? It also goes in the opposite direction, which is a more intuitive 
direction. It also has an off setting so that the batteries on your M6 won't drain. Similar to the M6s, the M6 TTL, it's the same size except two millimeters higher. The big difference, you see there's no self timer, just a battery compartment. The same frame lines are inside with the frame line selector lever. It loads the same way. It has the same um, frame lines in the viewfinder. It just has this larger wheel. The meter looks a little bit different in this camera as well. And without going into too much detail, it's, uh, uh, the meter is basically the same, but instead of two arrows that point at one another when you have the perfect exposure, you get two arrows and a little dot in the middle. But th it's virtually the same camera as the M6. It just has increased uh, through the lens flash metering capabilities, hence the name TTL. So here at Tamarkin Camera, the M6 and the M6 TTL are two separate models. The M6 TTL was also made in black chrome, silver chrome, and the Titan finish as well, although that's a little harder to find. Basically, they are the same camera. You select your ASA or film speed on the back of the camera, and it connects with the meter. Like the M6, we have our dot that creates 18% gray in the center so that the meter works. These are terrific cameras. And so we begin with the M5 and the CL, and we go to the M6, and then the M6 TTL, and the same size of TTL is the M7. And the M7 is also a little bit different. The M7 has many similarities. In other words, it's the same size. It's a little bit taller than the M6. Um, it has the frame line selector lever, the canted rewind, articulated advance. However, it has some features that the M6 TTL doesn't. For one, it has an aperture priority mode, which is designated auto on the top. And basically, it will choose the shutter speed for you. It has a lock for both the meter and the shutter. And also it has an electronically controlled shutter. And so only a 60th and a 125th are fully mechanical, which means that you need batteries to run the camera. Another interesting feature of the M7 is that it can read the DX code on your film cassette. And that's what this setting is for. You can also just dial in whatever your film speed is. And you have exposure compensation on the back as well, which is a handy dandy little item. Like earlier M cameras with meters inside, same kind of loading technique. Now, the M7 was only discontinued a couple years ago, and they came out with, they revisited an earlier camera called the MP, and some people say it stands for mechanical perfection, and many people would agree. This is a black lacquer MP camera that actually is currently for sale here at Tamarkin Camera. These cameras, the MP, were made in silver chrome and in black enamel, and this is a beautiful black enamel piece you can see it has a lot of the similarities of earlier cameras, but we've gone back to the earlier unarticulated advance and the pull-up rewind. We still have all the frame lines of the later cameras, and we have the little frame line selector lever here, our battery compartment here. We have the smaller wheel, so we've gone retro with the MP. And it also has an off position to save the battery. And like other M film cameras with meters, there's no spool to remove. And you can see it takes a motor or a like of it. And here is our MP camera with the rapid winding like of it. And so 
Nowadays, if you want a film Leica camera, you have two options. The Leica MP, which has a meter built into it, or the Leica MA, which unfortunately I don't have to show you, but it's nearly identical to this camera, except there's no battery compartment because there's no meter. And so there you have a summation of all of the Leica M cameras that shoot film and have a meter inside of them. And we started with the M5 and the CL, two odd size and shape cameras. And we went on to the M6s in their three different finishes. And then the M6 TTL, the M7, and finally the Leica MP. So I hope this, this answers some questions for you about the differences between the Leica film M cameras that have meters in them. We welcome your comments and we'd love to know if there's anything that we missed. Um, and meanwhile, do let us know if you're shopping for any of these or if you have other questions around Leica M film cameras. Thanks so much for watching. Prost.